How to survive a nuclear apocalypse. Uh, we have a bunch of these videos that we're going to be watching today. We saw one the other day, and it was just so stupid. Like, the issue with all of these videos is these are, like, almost unsurvivable encounters. And I understand it's, oh, how you're gonna survive it. But he never, he never gives a definitive, how the Am I gonna survive a nuclear apocalypse? I'm dead. How to survive a tsunami? I'm dead. You're not surviving them. So, like, we're gonna see what they say and whether or not it's actually a realistic way of, of them telling me how I'm gonna live this. Uh, that doesn't sound good. You survived catastrophic disasters in previous episodes, like tsunamis. Well, we haven't gotten to the tsunami video yet. So I don't know if we've survived the tsunami yet. Dude, this is what he's gonna say. How to survive a nuclear apocalypse. Just fucking tank that sh like Wolverine would. Literally. Bro just showed the Wolverine clip. Here's how to survive a nuclear apocalypse. You don't. Video ends. Right now, nine countries are in possession of nuclear weapons. Is it really only nine? I felt like, I felt like more, I feel like more countries have nuclear bombs than nine. North Korea, Pakistan, Israel. Oh, it's way more than nine. This guy's fucking dead wrong. North Korea, India, China, uh, Republic of South Africa, Ukraine, Brazil, Belarus, Australia, Belgium, Turkey, Iraq, Netherlands, Kazakhstan, Iran, France, US, Pakistan, Israel, Russia, UK, Germany, Japan, Mexico, Republic of Korea, and the Philippines. Bro, bro said nine countries. Yo, this was two years ago, but I don't think that many more countries got nukes in two years. A blast from a one megaton warhead would vaporize anything within one kilometer from its center. All of the buildings within seven kilometers would collapse from a blast of air. Anything in a 12 kilometer radius would be hit by a thermal blast hot enough to cause third degree burns. How the fuck am I gonna live through this? What is he gonna tell me to hide in a fridge? Like that dumbass movie scene? Hide in a lead-lined fridge, you'll be perfectly fine. What should you do when you hear the sirens? Say goodbye to my family. Why would fleeing be a bad idea? Why would fleeing be a bad idea? Bitch, that's the only thing I'm gonna try and do. I'm gonna be gassing that shit. I'm gonna be hopping my car, full floor in it, whatever direction I know that nuke ain't gonna be. Can't outrun a nuke? Well, it depends how long until it hits. After the siren, if it hits in like 60 seconds, no shit. But if it's like a siren and it's like, everybody, the nuke is gonna hit us in a half hour. I would say, okay, I'm gonna grab my PC. I'm gonna grab my dog. Then I'm gonna hop in my, I'm gonna hop in my, my Jeep Wrangler and I'm gonna go off-roading, bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my 4090, right? Because I'm going to need that GPU, right? Because I just bought that shit. I'm not dipping on the GPU, right? I'm going to get my dog. What about Brooke? Brooke will already be in the car. Okay, everybody say, yo, 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 yo. Stop acting like I forgot about my girlfriend. Brooke will already be in the car, bro. She's going to be grabbing her own shit, right? Whatever the fuck. I'm going to be grabbing, I'm going to grab my Teddy Fresh beanie so I can film TikTok still. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be getting my PC. I might, you know, I might grab Bob if I have some time. I'm gonna hop in the Jeep Wrangler. You know, doors off maybe. Might have to put the doors back on once the nuclear blast hits. But here's a few tips on how to get through the initial blasts and the aftermath. Do you think anybody watches these videos like writing notes down, like genuinely preparing for when this occurs? Step one, hide. Everyone's in a panic. Better act fast, because you could only have a few minutes before impact. The roads will likely be jammed with everyone trying to get out. This is a traffic jam that you wouldn't want to be caught in. Bro, if I know a nuke is gonna fucking hit us, I might just walk outside. Like, I'm not trying to be that guy. Dude, okay, I survived the initial blast. Then what? I somehow... By fucking all means, the 0.01% chance I live through the blast. Everything is dead. I can't leave because the radiation. And I, I'm, so I'm fucking trapped. Would I rather starve to death or instantly die by a nuke? I'm going to go for the latter right there because I think that, you know, both suck. But I'd ra if I know I'm going to die, I'd rather fucking, you know, just get hit with the initial blast probably. Your best bet is to hunker down and find shelter. Yeah, let me hide under a table. That'll really save me. That'll prevent the nuclear bomb 
from incinerating my body. If you or your neighbor have a bomb shelter, well, you don't need me to tell you where to go. No shit. If there are well, any- Dude, I don't, I don't got a bomb. Y'all got a bomb shelter? Try to find the largest cement building. In the best case scenario, go to the basement. If it doesn't have one, get to the center of the building. Hiding in a building will help to shield you from the blast. Going You're as deep dead as you can. either way, dude. Today is your lucky day. You find a basement to hide in. Everything around you violently shakes as you hear a deafening boom. You find your bearings and the rumbling settles. But don't leave just yet. It's still incredibly dangerous outside. Yeah, for like weeks or months. And you're probably gonna starve to death. Step two, wait it out. If you head out now, you'll be facing nerve searing heat and a whole lot of fallout. In as little as 15 minutes, radioactive bits of dirt and debris will start to fall from the sky. Soon what enough, everything music? outside will be covered in irradiated dust. Coming in contact with this stuff can quickly induce radiation poisoning, which is a terrible way to die. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Uh, how am I How am I going to prevent that? Uh, I got to buy a hazmat suit. I got to I gotta get a bunch of water. I got to get, uh, you know, a green light to grow plants. At this point, I might as well just make a fucking bomb shelter with enough food for five years, dude. Try to stay inside for at least 72 hours. After that, it will be safe for you to venture out. No, it won't. While you're in no, there. No, it won't. No, it won't. Bro, he is dead. I feel like he's just dead wrong. Three days after a nuke, I, after all the radiation is still on the ground, I can just walk outside. Yeah, okay. Isn't Chernobyl still deathly unsafe for like the next fucking 50, 100,000 years or some shit? I know that was a nuclear reactor, but still, like a nuclear bomb, I'm okay to go outside after three days. Uh, No, I'm not. You might try saving as much money as you can. You'll never know when you have to dig into your emergency funds. Money? Money? No way this dickhead just said money. Once the nuclear bomb incinerates, I don't know, everyone, money is what, paper? At that point, I'd be using that for fire. What the fuck? Hey, I have a $100 bill, bill here that you can't buy anything with because all the stores are fucking shut down. The government is shut down. Everyone's dead. Yeah, here's a $100 bill. I might as well wipe my ass with that $100 bill in this scenario. Bro just told me to save my money. The thing is, if a nuke causes society to collapse... Okay, here we go. He's actually not stupid. Your money will pretty much be useless. Yeah, good shit. Good shit. Okay, he actually has a good fucking point. But do you know what will stay the same while the dollar will lose its value? Gold. Gold. This is a whole advertisement for me to buy gold. This is a buy gold ad. This is literally a buy gold ad. Oh my fucking God. I understand it's valuable, right? But in a scenario where I need like food, you trading me your fucking gold necklace is also meaningless. I don't give a shit about jewelry when I'm starving to death. If times are feeling a little unstable, it's a good idea to invest in precious metals. You'll be able to hold on to your wealth once society bounces back from the devastation. Yeah, that shit ain't ever bouncing back, bro. If, like, ten nukes hit Earth, society ain't bouncing back for the rest of our lives, at least. You ain't give a shit about gold, then. If you're in the market for a hedge against a nuclear apocalypse, you should head over to the sponsor of this video, jmbullion.com. It's literally a gold ad. JM Bullion sells gold. I was joking. I was actually joking. This is an entire advertisement for gold. Discreet and accredited physical- No damn way he's promoing JM Bullion by saying that we need to buy gold for when the apocalypse hits. Step three, look for information. You take a step outside. The world you once knew is now a wasteland, but don't stop and stare too long. Time is of the essence. The longer you're in contact with radioactive material, the more it will affect your body. Yeah, and you're going to die of radiation poisoning. Bro saying it's safe to go outside after three days when the dust settles. Dude, no, it's not. It's crucial to get information in a time like this. You could find help, learn where the shelters are, or figure out if there will be any more attacks. 
the radio hits Dude, us in if a nuke is about to hit earth i am driving my car through a walmart and I'm going to camp out at the Walmart. I'm going to gather a bunch of food. Then I'm going to hop back in my car at the Walmart. I'm going to leave the Walmart and find somewhere where the nuke didn't hit. Plan solved, right? Realistically, I'm probably going to die by the nuke's hit. But that's how you live, right? Because then my car won't be destroyed because it's protected by the Walmart. And then I could, I could, I'll, I'll be enclosed in it so I don't get fucking killed by the radiation either. I'd turn off the air and I'd live in the little air that's in there for fucking 30 minutes while I drive out of the fucking nuclear site. Step four, search for others. Bitch, I ain't give a shit about others in this fucking scenario. Oh my god. I'm keeping me and the other people I'm with alive. Search for others. You're bugging the fuck out. I'm getting out first. And then I'm gonna figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do. While you're searching the nearby buildings, call out for other survivors. You can get a lot more done with friends. And Bro. You Bro, step five, he's about to say, find somebody of the opposite sex. You might need to restart society. You collect a decent amount of supplies and make a friend or two. Now you should consider traveling somewhere with warmer temperatures. A large amount of the ash and soot from the blast will be injected into the stratosphere, potentially blocking out the sun. You'll have to live off canned beans and tuna for the rest of your day. What the fuck? Dude, he's planning out every exact- Oh, you're gonna have to live on canned beans and tuna for the rest of your days, dude. Yo, at that point, why the fuck would I want to live? At that point, why the fuck would I want to live? If life is absolute hell, and everyone's dead, and I'm in a nuclear hell where the earth is frozen over, and I have to fucking melt everything to be able to use it, and I have to live underground to fucking breathe and all this other shit. Oh, fuck no. Quick interruption. <laughs> Y'all already know what I'm about to say. G Fuel Shaker Cub, tagged below. Check it out. That's all. Back to the video. All right, now we're on to the grizzly bear one. This is gonna be stupid as shit. How to survive a grizzly bear attack. This one might be a little bit more realistic. Bring a 12 gauge shotgun. Boom, done. Kim Wunderlich was out bow hunting when he found two bear cubs staring at him from just a few meters away, which meant their mother couldn't be far behind. Suddenly, the ferocious mom darted out the forest. Oh, hell no! Oh my god! Yo, I, yo, I understand they say play dead if you're a brown bear or some shit, bro. They're still ripping me the fuck up. The huge bear hit him so hard, they started rolling down the hill. Would he be crushed under the bear's body weight? Yes. Or would he survive long enough to fight it at the bottom of the hill? Here's how to survive a grizzly bear attack. You don't. Scary that brown bear attacks are increasing all over the Bro, planet. Bro, I don't know what I would do. Like, I really don't know what I would do. If I'm, like, riding my bike or some shit and I see bear a are literal brown bear chasing me, all over the I would try and climb a tree. But they can climb trees. And that's that. So then I'm fucked. Between 2000 and 2015, there were more than 660 attacks worldwide. Holy and shit. 183 were in North America. How did one survivor endure two bear attacks in a row? Two bear attacks in a row. Oh my god. What did bro play dead, get up, and then it immediately came back and started fucking beating the shit out of him again? The experienced hunter Todd Orr wanted to scout for elk. He was prepared and carried a pistol and bear spray. So when he stepped into a meadow and found a mother bear and her two cubs, and she started charging at him, Oh my god, dude, they're fucking huge. Quickly grabbed his bear spray, but it didn't stop her. She jumped on top of him. Oh, and you spray it with bear mace and then and then it doesn't work? You spray it with bear mace, it doesn't work? Okay, now I'll play dead. Bitch, you just made it angry. Todd laid face down, protecting his head and neck with his arms. When the bear was sure Todd wasn't a threat, she went back to her cubs and disappeared into the woods. Todd was injured, but he managed to go back to the trail and took the road back to his car. A few minutes later, he realized that he had taken the same path as the bears. And when the mama bear saw him- Oh, and they saw him again? Dude, I would be fucking so upset. You survive a bear attack, and then you see the same damn bear that n now knows that you weren't dead, and now you gotta redo the whole damn thing again. She was really furious. She charged at him angrily. Oh my god. Todd repeated his strategy and played dead. Well, this is the bear the broke his play. arm and cut tendons in his forearm, but he remained calm. Finally, the beast left him for dead. 
This time, Todd waited longer before getting up and going to his car, but he managed to walk 4.5 kilometers to his car and drive one hour to the nearest hospital. You pull up to the hospital? What happened? Oh, well, let me tell you how my day went. <laughs> what happened? Okay, well, I have, oh boy, do I have a story for you. Do you remember Kim? The guy who was falling off a hill with a mother bear? They fell down a 20 meter hill. When they stopped, the bear bit him on the upper inner thigh. As an experienced hunter, he knew that he must remain still and calm. He didn't move until he heard the bear return to its cubs. He was seriously injured, but his friends managed to help him to the hospital and he survived. Did his friends just fucking watch him get mauled by a bear? Luckily, his friends were there to take him to the hospital. Where the fuck were they when he was getting his ass kicked? Holy shit. Okay, let's play out this scenario. You're with three of your friends, right? So four people. And a grizzly bear starts rushing one of your friends. Are you helping that friend or are you running away? So you could quadruple team the bear or are you dipping? Y'all all running. Y'all are all running. No damn way you're all leaving your friend to die. You're all leaving your friend to die. Have you seen the short video where the lady was skiing and in, in the shot you could see a bear chasing her down without realizing? Yeah, I've seen that. Let's see what we- Dude, do you guys want to see that video? I feel like I could probably find that. Bro, you hear it in the back? Bro, she just gone. Probably jamming out to some good fucking tunes. Bear in the back going, fucking chasing her, bro. Oh my god. It's probably good she didn't notice because then she might have fell over and got scared. It gets close to her too. I don't know how it's catching up. To her. Holy shit! Nah, that's definitely real, bitch. Holy shit! That's real. Bro, they got it running up the hills and shit. It's been, you no, know, it's proven, oh, it's proven that it's fake? Bro, oh my god. That, that's some good ass editing if that shit's fake. That dead ass looks fucking real. Do you have to draw a circle to survive? Like in SpongeBob? In SpongeBob, all you have to do, yo, when the bear comes to attack you guys in the middle of the woods, all you gotta do is get a stick and draw a circle around you. Brown bears don't usually attack humans for food. They do it when they feel threatened or are starving. Oh, so you have to How am I supposed to know which it is? Stay in the fetal position to protect your organs. Cover your oh head God, with your Are they that big? Are bears dead ass that big, dude? That's massive. And be still. No matter how painful the attack is, stay down and still. When the bear leaves, what if it bites my leg off? No matter how painful it is, I just have to be dead quiet. The people in our next story didn't know this rule. Brian and Marilyn Matayoshi were hiking in Yellowstone National Park when they saw a mother bear with her two cubs. They stopped to take some pictures and decided to keep hiking. Some minutes later, they found the bears again. This time, the mom started following them. Yeah, see, I didn't know about that one though. Brian panicked and told his wife to run. They only ran about 155 meters before the bear reached Brian. Marilyn jumped behind a fallen trunk. She heard the bear mauling her husband, but she- Bro! This is a real story? This sounds awful! She stayed still on the ground. After it killed Brian, the bear went to Marilyn. She remained still, so the bear left. Marilyn escaped with no serious injuries. You have to sit there dead still while it murders your husband. You're just sitting there, it's fucking and your husband's screaming while he's getting his fucking lungs ripped out and his, and his face clawed and he's getting bit and you're just sitting there just Alright, we're on the last How to Survive video. This one's only four minutes. Probably because he can't say much about how to survive a fucking tsunami. You're on a beach. Sun bronzing your skin. Sand trickling between your toes. The sound of waves. Most replayed. Sand trickling between your toes, the sound of the world. The sun bronzing your skin, sand trickling between your toes, sand trickling between your toes. Where did all the water go? Did you see it going out? Better act quickly. 
In a matter of minutes, you may be underwater. Here's how to survive a tsunami according to science. Tsunamis are triggered by intense if under- I'm on the beach and a tsunami is coming my way, I'm dead. Uh, how, where the fuck am I going to go in time to not get hit by a fucking 400 foot wave? A Shit. tsunami's waves can be 100 kilometers long and sometimes taller than 30 meters. Taller than 30 meters. That's how tall is that? Like you're not living that. The, the highest tsunami was 1,700 feet tall. The Eiffel Tower is 1,000 feet. It's, it's two Eiffel Towers. The Empire State Building. The Empire State Building is 1,454 feet to the tip. That wave was taller than the Empire State Building. So with such speed, strength, and stamina, how does anyone stand a chance? Even I always say, why don't people just swim through a tsunami? But tsunamis move very fast. The average tsunami is 500 miles per hour. The first step to survival is to be able to identify the early signs of a tsunami. In most cases, an earthquake comes before a tsunami. So if you're near the coast and you experience an earthquake, protect yourself from that first. But once the shaking stops, move to higher ground as quickly as possible. An earthquake happens. I just start running up the Hollywood Hills. My friends are like, where are you going? What the fuck are you doing? There's a tsunami. There's a tsunami. Uh, how to survive YouTube channel told me I need to run up hill. I've got to, I'm going up, I'm going up there because they said that after an earthquake. An early sign of an impending tsunami is that the water along the coast will recede. It pulls back and exposes the sea floor. Do not go to the beach to investigate. Oh, but that'd be so cool to investigate. Try to get as far as three and a half kilometers from the ocean or 30 meters above sea level to ensure your safety. Get to the highest elevation possible. How the fuck, if I'm on the beach and I see the water receding, I get about like a minute. Tsunamis travel quickly and you may not have enough time to clear the hazard zone. In this case, look for a tall building with a sturdy concrete foundation. Oh no. If you see one nearby, run inside and get to the roof as quickly as possible. Yeah, and then if the building gets knocked over, you just kind of pull like an MLG water bucket, you know what I mean? And you just kind of jump into the tsunami wave and then you'll live. In the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, an Indonesian woman was finally rescued after holding onto a palm tree for five days straight. While it isn't ideal. How long was the fucking current going? Five days! A tsunami isn't one wave, but a series of waves known as a tsunami wave train. I thought it was one wave. I thought it was one wave. It goes without saying, tsunamis are terrifying. And when a 30 meter wave is hurtling towards you at 800 kilometers per hour, you're probably feeling pretty helpless. But Yo, I don't know what the fuck this dad's doing. It ain't looking good. Let me just say, it ain't looking good for for this dad and his kid. All right, we're done with the how to survive videos for today. Um...